She often sees them when she walks her dog across the cliffs, the sea stretching its glitter southward to a hazy blue horizon. They nibble grass quietly, as if they're tame, but they never stray far from the clumps of gorse with its harsh yellow flowers and spiked green branches casting shadows. And every time, her West Highland Terrier sets off in chase, but the rabbits always escape, scuttling into the gorse and down their tight burrows, leaving the dog above ground, barking with frustration. The rabbits have small tails bobbing behind them, which remind her of the fireproof one she wore herself with its three press studs long ago in Park Lane, when she stood at the blackjack table dealing cards to men who played obsessively through the evening hours, a glass of whiskey beside them, losing their money, sometimes with a wry smile, sometimes a curse. And then, invariably, Henri's face floats to the surface with come-to-bed eyes and the rumpled look that made you want to take him in hand. I'm in oil, he said, on their date in a club when she came off work. He played for high stakes, bought her champagne, tipped her with notes that she pushed down her front, where padding lifted her breasts into a shelf. Then, one night, his seat at the table was empty. And though she knew it would happen, she wasn't prepared. She wept every night in her break. And the bunny mother hugged her, saying, don't get involved. So she didn't. But now, she still thinks of him, wondering if, on the other side of the haze, where French cliffs mirror those under her feet, Henri might walk a dog of his own and remember it too. The chandeliers and cigarette smoke, the click of the chips, the swish of the cards, and the long-legged girl with fur ears put on an Alice band who winked at him slyly. She called her dog Henry. No one knew why. <laughs>